I, obviously, you guys get back into the grind. You've been doing it since summer, but what's it mean to now finally get back into the season? I mean, it's good. You know, first week of practice today. You know, we're all excited. We're all ready to get going. You know, it's been a long summer. You know, we've been working hard. Um, the team's coming together uh, really nicely. The guys are working. So, you know, it's going to be good to get things full, finally rolling at full speed. Yeah, I'm just excited to actually get things, you know, officially started. Uh, kind of like you said, it's been a long summer, but, you know, it's a lot of good things happening. So, I'm enjoying it. A lot of new faces, just like a year ago. Um, who, who are going to maybe catch the eye of uh, Ute fans this year? Some mm -hmm. of the newcomers. I mean, I think any, any one of them can. You know, we have a deep team. All of them have been working real hard. Everyone's, you know, been able to display something different from the, each other. And so it's just the fans are going to have to pick for themselves who they like this year and, you know, who's going who's gonna, to uh, come out. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fans are for sure going to have um, a choice to make because you could go down the line and all the newcomers and they all show you something very unique about their game. And it's all something that could help us in a big way. You've obviously been with Craig a bit now, but mm. this is year two coming into Utah. How do you feel like things are different this year than maybe coming in last year when it was his first season here? Um, you get a, you kind of get a feel of like a whole, like another confidence, kind of, because, you know, last year was just new for everybody, but, you know, us returners, coach coming back another year, um, it's kind of like we know the culture now. And just as a group, everybody's buying in, so it's a really good thing. How's it been having Chris Burgess here, Brandon, and working with him and what, a couple hours a week, I guess? You know, it's been great. You know, Coach Burgess recruited me uh, when I was in high school when he was at UVU. You know, I loved him uh, there, and, you know, it's great to have him here. You know, it's been, it's been great having actually a lot of different coaches kind of coach me throughout my college career. You know, I had Coach Connor work with me with, the old, uh, with Coach K when he was here, and then uh, Coach Peterson last year in Alberta. So I've been learning a lot of different things from all the coaches, and I think it's been very beneficial to me and my game. Um, so, and Burgess is a great man, so I love having him here. So what's the chemistry been like with, like we mentioned before, all the new faces? How have you guys been able to kind of gel? How about Marco on that one? Um, well, I know last year we talked about how, you know, we liked ourselves a lot off the court. But this year is, it's the best of both worlds because we have guys that are always wanting to play uh, like open gym and pick up. So I can't tell you like a day that we truly have off because we're coming in, you know, by ourselves and we're all getting together and playing even more basketball. Um, with each other and you know the best way to get better is to actually play so that's really the biggest thing. Do you, do you feel like you guys are getting better? I mean I know it's hard to tell in you know, summer conditioning practice and stuff that way but do you feel like this team is making the progress that you need to, to move forward in? Oh for sure I mean you know before last season happened there wasn't a, a year I didn't make the tournament um, so I've been around a couple of good teams and I feel like this team is you know reaching that status. What, what do you think separates this year's team versus last year? The physicality, for sure. I mean, if you watch our practice, um, we're much bigger, a lot stronger, a lot faster. And so if you look at the games last year, the ones that we lost, it was because we were kind of like getting bullied throughout the game. And I don't feel like that will be a factor this year. Brandon, what do you feel like you've changed to your own game? Or what have you improved on or worked on this summer? I don't think I, my biggest thing, well, I've been in the weight room with Coach O a lot. You know, I've put on from last, well, Last season was crazy with appendicitis and COVID. You know, I was up and down on my weight. And so by the end of the season, I was 205. And now I'm back up to like 225 to 226. Um, so I think being in the weight room is the biggest thing that's helped me. And like Marco said, with our physicality. Um, so that's been really helpful. And as well, I've just been working more on um, being able to make, to make plays, um, being able to read um, the defense and my team out from the post and from the perimeter. Same question, Marco. What have you been working on besides the weight room? I'm um, obviously shooting, um, you know, I plan or like a personal thing for me is against the free throw line a lot more and actually uh, being a great free throw shooter from the line. So just this summer, I've really, you know, I didn't go home. I stayed up here and just got as much shots as possible. So. It feels like every college basketball team, the, the, the goal is obviously NCAA tournament. That's going to obviously be no different for you guys. But what do you what do you guys see as success this year, maybe outside of getting to the NCAA tournament? I think last year, a, a big problem of ours where we were looking into the future a little too much. And um, this year, we're kind of taking it like an everyday process. So I can't really give you uh, like an expectation, just that we expect to go into practice today and have a great one. Greg, how's your team looked as they reconvened, although you've seen them most of the summer, but how have they looked together, I guess? 
Yeah, it's been good. I, I thought we had a really good summer. I thought we've had a, an excellent fall. Um, we've done um, a lot more team stuff than we've typically done uh, at this time of year. And that's obviously been intentional with eight new guys to our program. And uh, we're doing a few different things, nothing crazy, but certainly some different scheme with different personnel. So it's been an awesome group to work with. Uh, it's a group that has an attitude that craves improvement. Uh, it's, I always say this, everybody's uh, having a lot of fun right now. They seem to get along great, but everybody thinks they're playing 35 minutes a night. And so, but it is a good group. It's a, it's a lot different looking team, a lot more physical, a lot more athletic. Um, I know that we just got out of film a little bit ago. Uh, they're excited to get rolling. Last year, beginning of the season, you had talked about the, the margin for error is razor thin. How, yeah. how are you feeling about this year going into the second year? For yeah, you? we're a lot different team, uh, no doubt. And knock on wood, we have 15 guys out there practicing, although today it'll be a couple less. Uh, we've been pretty healthy all in all, especially this fall. This summer we had some things where we had 10 and 11 guys, but um, uh, but we're different. I mean, like I said, we 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 can maybe make a few more mistakes and, and recover just because we're a little quick twick. We're bigger, you know, our, all of our new guys, even though their height not be, might be crazy, we're very long. We're a lot longer, we're a lot more athletic. Like I said, a lot more physical, a lot quicker to the ball. And so those gaps that maybe were a little bigger gaps last year closed down a lot quicker uh, with this year's team. I think we'll be a lot better rebounding team. Uh, which we needed to be, you know, and that's why we ended up where, not just the rebounding piece, but all those factors is partially why we ended up where we did. So, um, and then the other part of it is, you know, um, we, with having eight new guys, you don't always know how everyone's going to acclimate, but, but I think just vetting through the rec recruiting process, these guys are here uh, and are very determined. Basketball is very, very important to them uh, as a collective group, and we got a lot of high achievers in this uh, on this team, and so I know they're excited to get rolling. With so many new faces, who's kind of stepping up in the leadership type? Of Literally, as I was walking down, I knew that question was going to be asked. Um, you know, I'd say in terms of just leadership, I think it's our upperclassmen. And when I say upperclassmen, there's a lot of ways to view that because of the whole COVID year, right? There's a lot of guys that get five years of eligibility. So I look at it technically, Marco Anthony is the only guy that is exhausting his college career this year, right? Um, but Marco's been a, a great leader. Uh, Brandon Carlson has been outstanding. Uh, Jackson Brenchley, upperclassman, veteran guys, fourth year. He's had a very good voice. And then of the new guys, they've all had their spots, but the most vocal guy is Gavin Baxter, who hasn't been able to play or do anything, you know, even, I mean, he's been doing limited drill work, but he's got a great voice and he's a veteran guy and, and obviously an upperclassman. I love what all these new guys are bringing to the table. I love what our, our returners have done, but I'd say those to me are guys that have really stood out and they are the upperclassmen. And if, if I was to name one, you know, younger guy that's consistently had a good voice, that's a returner is Lazar Stefanovic and Lazar, is a very intelligent guy. He knows what we want. He's all about culture. And I think he's taken his vocal leadership to a different level, which can be very difficult to do for a, a sophomore, but he has the game experience and the confidence and the respect of everybody uh, on the team. You say every year or that the NCAA tournament is the goal, but Marco and Brandon just kind of said maybe they got a little ahead of themselves last year and they're going to more of a everyday focus yeah is that true or is that still your goal? I mean that's always going to be my goal no matter I'll always be steadfast in that however you like truly and it's cliche-ish I get it taking it one day at a time and the whole one percent better and let's just keep building and I think that's what this group has done a good job of you know I just uh, a week ago uh, two weeks ago I took a trip a long trip it was a very long flight uh, over 10 hours and so I was able to watch like all of our um, fall practices up to that point in a row. And sometimes as a player or as a coach, as a coach, I think it's a little easier to see, but as a player, maybe you don't always feel at how those individuals are getting better and how the team is getting better. And when you stack them and you watch practice after practice, like it's very obvious, you can see guys figuring it out. And even in our film session today, 
um, it's easy to see guys are picking up on some nuances and things that even two weeks ago they weren't doing consistently we're starting to starting to do so that's what we got to do we got to stack them uh, as they say we got to have a great mentality and, and there's so many different ways to learn on the floor through film right and um, and this group has been very very good that way and, and I think those two guys those are wise those are wise old young men uh, that said that to you and and I think we do got to take a, a different approach that way we talk a lot about players and how they progress mm -hmm. but how do you feel you and your staff have improved over year one yeah I mean it's a different staff um, first of all obviously um, uh, Eric Peterson became the head coach at University of South Dakota and Brandon Ubell, who I coach at Nebraska and has been with us the last three years took the assistant job with him and we've added Chris Burgess we're so excited for him and I think he's been a uh, a great addition to our program in a lot of different ways and um, and so we're all learning it's a really tight staff like I feel like our um, we have great camaraderie and chemistry and you know like we talk all the time you got to be able to stand on the table for your man or your belief and that's what I like uh, I really like about this group we're not afraid to speak our opinion but it's okay to disagree and be respectful about it and it's been outstanding and like I said you know our staff that was here last year went through the Pac-12 for the first time, and every league's a little bit different. And um, so you learn the league and what it's like to play at this venue and this team and what's their style of play and different things that you maybe need to have in your repertoire, so to speak, to be able to win. And so um, I, I like what we've done. I thought we had a great summer together and fall, of course, um, and looking at different ways to, to be better and to put our guys in a better position to succeed because we are so different with our personnel that I think we're going to have the versatility to play a lot of different ways, whether it's big, big, small, small, um, really athletic, maybe, you know, skill. So just kind of depending on and, and find those right groups that can uh, have success. Following up on that, how much do you try to change each year, right? Do you, do you, do you look at that or do you look at the personnel and what, what's kind of the balance there? Yeah, all the above. I mean, we're always going to have our core and our culture and what we believe in and, and you got to find different ways to win. And sometimes it's not a, an exact science, but at the same time, you got to be able to adapt and adjust to your personnel. And certainly we are different with some, way, much different from last year, but this is a different team than, than I've coached quite frankly. And I mean, since I've been a head coach, so like we are going to be doing some different things. Um, and then we're learning on the fly here a little bit too to see who can grasp what. And there's different days. You know, I was asked the question earlier, who has stood out? And literally, I'm happy with all the new guys and all the returners. I mean, and it's one of those things after almost every team workout where you walk away thinking, wow, this guy, the, the, these three guys stood out today. And then maybe the, the next practice, it's three or four different other guys, right? And so that really stood out. But that doesn't mean you know, as a whole, our effort has been outstanding, but we're always looking at different ways, new ideas, learning different concepts, maybe something that, you know, uh, Texas Tech ran that was really effective. Hey, maybe we need to look into that. Or maybe the Golden State Warriors, right? Winning the World Champ. God, we should maybe look into that. They're always creative and innovative. And you're always looking for an edge that can help put you over the top uh, philo philosophically and schematically. My math might be wrong, but or I might have You're usually good with math. <laughs> That's what I've learned about you, Jay. That's one thing. <laughs> uh, it looks like you're going into the season with a scholarship open. Yeah. Is that true? And yes. And why? What, is that um, it is true. No, it's not necessarily philosophical, although it's happened two years in a row. Um, you know, it was just one of those things. Ben, Car If I'm not mistaken, Ben Carlson was the last new guy to commit or to sign, mm -hmm. right? And so we knew we had to have another guy like that and uh and then it was just kind of one of those things like okay let's see what happens right and um and it just didn't happen where we have you know brought in another guy you're always now something almost did but it didn't and so that's how it goes but uh, i think you know scholar having scholarships that's like a pretty important thing and and we're always going to hold out for guys that we feel like can help us get to where we need to go and so um, we'll see how things go. It could be a mid-year transfer, you know, at this point. Could be. Maybe it gets awarded to someone um, that is currently on the team. We'll just see how things play out that way. But it's not a philosophical thing necessarily. But we're not just going to fill it to fill it either, right? And so I just, I've never believed in that.
So is Gavin not medically clear? Not yet, okay. um, but he's, yeah, he's, he's been outstanding. Boston Hold obviously got cleared, I think, two weeks ago. Um, Gavin is working his you-know-what off. He's been tremendous that way. Trevor uh, has rave reviews and Logan Ogden, our strength coach, but Trevor, our, obviously, our, um, our athletic trainer who's been here a long time. Um, but Gavin's been working very, very diligently, been working very, very hard, and hopefully in the next... I don't know, three, four weeks, hopefully he'll be cleared. The good news for Gavin is he's been through this before and he's an upperclassman. He's a veteran guy. He's very intelligent. He's been at every workout and, um, and so he knows what's going on. He's been able to pick up on things quickly. And so now you gotta, once he gets out there, the good news is what Boston, and I'm not trying to compare, but when Boston was cleared, he had about a week of just kind of getting his legs under him and then he hit the floor and, and, and I mean, he's picked off right where he, left off and he played pretty well those last couple of games um, before he got hurt last year. Who or what has been the most pleasant surprise so far? That's the question I was anticipating, sorry. Um, and, and this is the, I know you're gonna think this is the politically, but I've literally, if, are you asking, are the whole team the, or returners team or new guys? Or I mean, I, I'm excited about every one of our guys and I, and I mean that and I know how that sounds. Like I, I, I do get it. But like, I feel like Brandon Carlson's improved. I feel like Marco Anthony's improved. I feel like Jackson Brenchley's improved. I, I feel like Gabe Madsen's improved. I, I can go right now. Raleigh, Raleigh had an excellent summer. Um, and then with the new guys, I mean, I mean, I can name every single guy again. Like Mike Saunders is really starting to figure some things out. Ben Carlson's been, been excellent. I, I can just, all those guys have, have brought something to the table. The, the, the freshmen, I mean, those guys, A, don't look like freshmen. Uh, and you'll see that if you haven't seen them. Um, but they, they, they're smart guys. They're, they're smart, tough, and dependable. Like, you know what you're going to get out of those guys every day, which is you can't usually say that about freshmen. But with this group, I've been able to say that. And so I know how that sounds, and I'm not trying to be PC, and I'm not, but I'm excited about them all. I think they all bring something different to the table, and they work hard. They're a fun group to be around. And I'm not saying it's all roses or all perfect or we're all in a utopia, but, I mean... I don't know that I can say a guy that hasn't, that I don't feel like has clearly improved um, as a player. Got time for one more. Are you happy with the schedule you were able to put together? Yeah, the, it, scheduling is the hardest part right now for a multitude of reasons. One, where we're at, like not knowing who you're going to get recruiting wise and where do you think you're going to be. Two, you don't know who, how good other teams are going to be, <laughs> like, right? Like just because of the portal. It, it's just, it's so hard to, predict who's going to be what. So I love our, I love our MTE. Uh, you know, when we signed up for that, I think we were, I don't know if we were the last team or second last team to get into that. Uh, we didn't know who would be playing. So obviously Georgia Tech uh, in the first round and then winner or loser of Marquette and uh, Mississippi State. And I love MTEs where when you win, you, ad you advance. It's like, it feels, I love that feeling of like it's tournament play and postseason play. So, and it's a great venue. It's a great, it's very, very well run. It's first class in every way. Um, BYU, want to play that for as long as, like, humanly possible. Home at home, I'm a huge believer in the home at home thing. Um, go to play at their place. Of course, this year, it's an incredibly difficult place to play. Obviously, they've been very good here for quite some time. And uh, we want to keep that thing rolling. And then TCU, people forget, we played at TCU last year on a neutral in Fort Worth. And so now they're returning to Vivint. And, and that's cool playing in that kind of a world-class event. Of course, we wanted to make that a home and home. Uh, they didn't want to do that last year. And so that's okay. In some ways it helps with, and there, a lot of people have them as a, a, a potential Final Four team. They return everybody. And anybody watched the game against Arizona in the NCAA tournament knows how good they are. <laughs> and so, and then we have seven home games. And you know, you just don't know how that all one of those is part of the MTE, so the six other home games. You know, we're trying to build this thing up and, and, and get a great home court advantage and get people back in the stands consistently. I think our fan base is going to love the team and how hard we compete and the way we share the ball and the way we do things. It's definitely um, a different level than a year ago. Uh, our expectations to get back to the top. So, you know, I, I like it. I don't know if I completely love it, but I think it's a good spot for where we're at right now.